Hi everyone, so today I want to show you how I made this card. Now this is very similar and the idea came from Sam at Mixed Up Crafts. She did um, a double column card, I think she called it. Double, I think it was a double column card um, and I really loved it. I thought it was amazing. Um, but I thought her pillars were done slightly differently. So I did them the way I thought they were done and then realised, no, actually she'd done them a different way. So anyway, so this is my version. So I'm calling this an H-shaped pillar card because it looks like a letter H to me. Um, but yeah, and it's basically the same card as hers. It's just that like I found a different way of doing the sides. Um, so the construction is different, but the design looks the same. Uh, so yes, yeah, so this, this is what I've done. Um, I think, I'm not sure what size she did. Um, Mine basically falls flat to be a, a five by seven, so it fits in an envelope for a five by seven card. Um, you could downsize it, you could do different sizes, whatever you want to do, really. Um, I've used the same construction for the pillars that I used on the triple layer um, pillar card that I uploaded a, um, a while ago, a week or so ago. Um, and I've used the Paper Boutique, uh, what are they called, Springtime Blooms papers. I'll show you those in a moment. Um, for this and I absolutely love these these papers. I just absolutely love them. So yeah, so hopefully you'll have a go. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so for this card you need a few bits, not too much, but I've already mat and layered my pieces because I had I wanted the pattern to continue um around the side. So that's why I've stuck my bits down. But anyway, I'm gonna go through everything you need. So let's start with um I start with the base pieces and then we'll move on to these um, other pieces in a moment. Okay, so you need two pieces of seven by seven and a half card and one that is three and a half by seven. So the two that are seven and a half by seven, you want to put it in along the seven and a half inch edge and you're going to score at three quarters one and a half, two and a quarter, and three inches. And then you're going to score at four and a half, five and a quarter, six inches, and six and three quarter inches. So it's basically the same score lines as we did for the... Um, the triple layer pillar card that i did um it's exactly the same as that except for you've just got the extra height that's all you've got seven inches high so if you repeat this on the other piece make sure it's the seven and a half inch edge you're scoring on um and we're going to go ahead and do the, the scores on here as well okay so you should end up with your score lines on your card you can't really see them very well on here but anyway um, and then, as we did before, you're going to um, take off, so you've got the lines going this way now. Hopefully you can kind of see that on the bottom there. So you're going to take off, um, I would take off about an eighth of an inch on this side and an eighth on this side. And the same on that one. Okay, so I've just taken off an eighth of an inch either side, um, which leaves me with that. So this is now, this now measures seven and a quarter inches by seven inches, okay? Now the reason why you don't just start off with a seven by seven and a quarter is because otherwise these measurements here would be all eighths and it's just a faff. I mean, if you want to go and do that, that's fine. But for me, I need, I need quarters and halves and three quarters of an inches. Eighths get me a bit, especially when there's a lot of them, I get a bit confused. So anyway, that's that. And then as I said, you've got your three and a half by seven um, piece of base card as well. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to concentrate on these, which is going to make the pillars. So what we want to do is go through and just fold and burnish every single score line. And they're all going to be mountain folds. Okay, so you end up with two pieces that are like that, all just rolled up. Now, a little note for you here. I've used 240 GSM card, and I'm thinking that's a little bit too thick. To be honest, when I did it previously, I used 180 GSM. Um, so I would say anywhere between 180 and 210 GSM, really. I don't think you want to go any thicker than 210. Uh, I mean, you're going to have very sturdy pillars, don't get me wrong on that, but I just think it makes it a bit more, it's not, it doesn't fold flat as easy, it doesn't move as easy. Right, so now what we're going to do is if we fold this, turn this over, so we've got them all mounting folds, 
we're going to put some red tape or you can use wet glue along here and along here i'm actually going to use red tape this time um last time i actually used um wet glue but i'm going to go with the red tape this time around just because it's quite thick card this is i mean let's say 240 so for a card base that's not that thick but for this card because of the the fact it's going to be layered up it is going to work out quite chunky so i just want to use a bit of red tape so that then when i'm sticking it on the video you at least don't have to watch it dry <coughs> Okay, so you should end up with that. So let's take one of them. Let's turn it over so the tape's facing down. We're going to fold along the second score line like that. And then take off the um, tape backing. And if you want, you can take it all off or you can take part of it off. It's up to you. And then we're going to fold along that line on top like that and shut the whole thing. So the whole thing should stick and you end up with that. Okay, so then we're going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to turn it round because it's my right hand side. It's easier to work with. I'm just going to fold that out of the way. Uh, and then we're going to take the backing off of here again. And then again, we're just going to make sure this is out of the way. And that is going to stick onto this bit here. So we're going to fold along that edge there and stick that into position. Just going to fold it back and give it a bit of a... Just make sure it's down properly. And so that gives you a classic kind of two pillar with a gap in the middle. OK, so that's that. So we're going to repeat the process on this piece here. OK, so you should end up with your two little pillar things that are like that with a little gap in the middle. And then it's flat on that side and then you've got your, obviously your strips. So those two bits with the gaps need to face inwards like that. And then we're going to bring in our three and a half by seven piece of card. And that is going to slot in the middle here. So that's going to slot there. And this one is going to slot there. Now it does leave a very narrow bit in the middle. But I quite like that because it makes it look quite elegant. And also means that when you fold it flat, it will fit in a five by seven card um, envelope. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some, um, I'm actually going to do glue I think for this. Add some glue on the inside there and then just stick that in like that um, you can use red tape if you want to i just think that with this bit here as well i find um glue's a little bit easier to just make sure you know you've got wiggle room just to make sure it's definitely stuck so i'm going to start with one side first so i'm going to start with this side here and then i'm going to stick that in like that and it also means if it's a slightly too high or slightly too low you can kind of just readjust it to make it fit so that's like that and then we're going to add some glue on the other side and stick it down okay so you end up with that so now we're going to repeat the process on this side so again just add glue and if you want you can do one side then the other or you can just go straight in and add both i'm going to go i'm going to be daring and i'm going to add glue on this side and i'm going to add it on this side at the same time this is quite a dangerous thing to do it's not dangerous but you know <laughs> it could go wrong put it that way it could go wrong so i'm going to get this Lock that into there and then stick it into position and if you stick it flat the way you want it to be then that means you know it's definitely going to fit in your envelope so do that like that and then just pop it up you got glue strings get rid of any glue strings and there's your card base ready to go so what we're going to do now is going to decorate it so for the decoration you're going to need a few pieces of mat and a few pieces of pattern so i've cut my pieces out here now i'm using uh you know me i love the paper boutique and so this is one of their um much older pads i've had i was actually given this pad um it's called let me bring it in <clears throat> it's called springtime blooms um 
this was born from the range, 7 .99. I believe it was the range in Swindon because this was from the Swindon ladies, my lovely Swindon ladies who I haven't seen for ages. Um, who've given me loads of stuff over the years. Um, and this is one of the, the packs they gave me. Um, and so this was the paper kit from the paper boutique and it has 36 decorative papers with six designs. And then you've also got your 32 die cut toppers. So I'm actually using those as well. Um, really nice, really nice pack that. So, yes, we're using those. So you're going to need, in total, um, for the front strips, I'm not going to put them on yet because I want to explain something because I didn't do this on the other, on the pop, um, the triple layer pillar card that I did. I did that on, on this channel, but I've also did it in my craft class. And both times, plus the original sample card, I forgot to add acetate on the front. Now, this time around, I'm not planning on adding acetate, but I just wanted to, show take it through as if you were adding acetate so if you want to you can add acetate on the front and on the back okay i'm not going to do that i prefer it without the acetate so what you will need for this center bit here you're going to need a matte piece that is one and three quarters by six and three quarters and a pattern that is one and a half by six and a half okay so that's going to go in the middle there and then we also need exactly the same again for the back okay so for this back piece here exactly the same again so i'm going to go ahead and stick those down okay so one thing about this is i think that my border that i did on the triple pop up the triple layer pillar card was better than than what i've done on this one so that for me that's a bit of a wide border because it's so narrow um, so just to let you know, this gap here is basically two inches. So if you wanted to, you could make your mat one and seven eighths instead of one and three quarter, and you could make your pattern one and three quarter instead of one and a half. Okay, so that's just an option if you want a slightly, you know, if you want it more pattern because that is quite skinny. But I'm fine; I can deal with that. But just in case you do. Okay, so then we're going to do the we're going to do the sides. We'll leave the fronts. We'll come back to them in a minute. So for your sides, you're going to need two pieces. The mats are, and again, it depends on what border you want. So I've gone for a bigger border. So you can see that's a bigger border. I quite like that. I'm happy with that. But if you want to go for this, this border, then your sides need to be one and a quarter by six and three quarters for the mat and one inch by six and a half for the pattern. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick these on. Okay, so that's the, um, the sides done. Now for the front, if you want to add acetate on the front and on the back, then I would say that you need a piece of acetate that is, um, well, the inside piece was three and a half wide, wasn't it? I would say you need to come in slightly. So whatever you're, you're doing for your border, I would say you probably need to come in to about three and a quarter. I, I, would, I would say three and a quarter wide by about um, six and three quarters high. That's what I would do for my acetate. Um, just because then it's within the boundaries of your strips and you're not gonna see it poking out the sides, you're not gonna see it poking out top and bottom. Okay, so if you wanna do that, you can do that. And then you can go ahead and add your um, pattern strips and your mat strips. So your mats for the front, and I've gone for a very thin board on this one because these are so narrow anyway. The um, mats for the front are five eighths by six and seven eighths and the pattern is half an inch by six and three quarters so i'm going to go ahead and stick those on the front and they've also done two for the back so you need four in total four of those mats and four of those patterns so i'm going to go ahead and stick those down Okay, so that's the front and the back stuck down now if you wanted to you could also add another four strips two here and two here i'm going to leave it i don't mind the white it kind of gives a bit of relief um but you could do that as well that's an extra bit you could add so now all you need to do is find out what top you want to add and stick them down so i've got um this one the have a blooming beauty have a blooming lovely day for the front 
and then I've also cut out another one um, and I've stamped it with have a awesome birth birthday I think these were waffle flower or lawn fawn I can't remember I'll put the link in the description I've used them before but they're really good stamps use them all the time um so yeah so we're gonna go ahead and stick this down now obviously it's wide enough that it's got enough you know girth to go across so you want to make sure that whatever your topper is it's between three and three and a half inches wide if you're not using acetate okay so i'm going to go ahead now and i'm just going to stick this onto the front okay so i've just realized well when you stick your topper down you need to stick it so that it's flat so make sure kind of put it into where you need it to be and then fold it flat so that then you know it's definitely gonna because sometimes your pillars will kind of move out the other thing as well is if you're using glue you need to hold it till it's set because i didn't and it just moved um if you're using red tape that's probably a better idea okay so there's the front one done so that's now stuck i'm gonna use red tape on the back just to show you how much easier that it sticks a lot quicker Okay, so there you have it. So you've got that on the front, and then there you go. And then on the back, you've got the um, the greeting. And you might have seen me. You can either um, add the tape to the back of the circle or the top of whatever it is you're using, or you can put it onto the pillar. As long as you know roughly where you're putting it, um, maybe maybe a little mark or something. Um, but yeah, but it's quite a nice a nice card. So the actual card, when it's popped up, measures three and a half by seven. And then when it folds flat, it measures five by seven. So whatever you put on the front, make sure it doesn't pop out the sides because otherwise then that will change the footprint of your card when it's folded flat. But it's quite a nice card. I quite like it. It's very elegant. I think it's very elegant um, because it's quite tall and thin. I think that makes it look more, more elegant. Um, but yeah, it's a good card. I hope you'll have a go. I hope you like it. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Hit the notification bell. We're almost at 10K. I can't believe it's now. We're well, filming this. It's now like the middle of beginning. Yeah, beginning of May, kind of heading towards the middle of May. And I'm almost at 10K already. I mean, I've only got like another, what, less than 500 subscribers to go before we hit 10K. And that is like, what? That's amazing. So thank you, everybody who subscribed. You are all amazing. Um, if you haven't subscribed, you're watching me, please hit the subscription, um, the yeah, subscribe button. It really helps me as a channel um, to carry on doing what I'm doing um, and to bring you content going forward. So please do. That would be wonderful. OK, so anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it um, and I will see you again next time. Bye.